little 10k this morning, 100 crunches, 300 press ups, ready. God, the support's unbelievable from close friends and family. Yeah? Please nail this absolute prick today. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Hearn's Barmy Army, make sure you ruin this Wally. <laughs> Read some of that on yeah. Yeah. I just said to Benson, I said, I would have to be moments from death. To <laughs> because you'd never hear the end of it, would you? you think I'm, no. And I looked at the responses and I was like, you, no, right. you really think? Exactly! Like, in, you know, like, I think you need to be a good moderator, because he never time. lets anyone speak. We've been going on about Conti and God knows what else, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's all been football centric until now. Well me and Conti got one thing in common, we both flew Ryanair. I went yesterday, you know, I saw, someone, I saw a post saying, Conti's on Ryanair, and I was actually sitting on the Ryanair flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus, you know. Morning, morning. The old snake, oh, sounds good. There you go, Eddie, great, great seeing you. Right, how are you mate? Yeah, good, yeah. good, good, good. I'm straight in on the first of you here. here? A nation comes to a standstill because he's here. Eddie Heron is in studio with myself and Simon. And it's all going to happen in the next hour, maybe longer than the next hour. We'll see where it takes us. Eddie, you're welcome. Do either of you, first you, Eddie, do you regret any of the personal attacks that you've made on each other in the last few months? Mm, oh, there's a few wry smiles from both there. I think generally we, we acknowledge and agree with what we said. Um, I didn't like what Simon said. I, I don't like as well that we ducked the media. I mean, we basically did every outlet available. We also did talk sport. I just didn't do the Jim White and Simon Jordan show, which I'm delighted to be here today to deliver you astronomical numbers. <laughs> Why didn't you come to us at that time? You've come to us today and it's your choice to be here today. Uh, we reached out to you at that time, but you weren't having it. You didn't reach out that much, actually. Yeah, um, we did. No, well, once really. is no, enough. No, we got, I got asked to come on the talk sport morning show. I got asked to come on this show. I didn't like what he said. I didn't like what he said. Uh, I took it personal, probably a little bit of ego, and I wanted to give him a slap. Right, really? well, let, let me bring the listeners up to date before you come in, Simon. Um, what happened? Much of the confrontation over the last uh, recent times came off the back of the collapse of Ben Eubank Jr. Uh, the, the fight was called off due to Ben's failed drugs test. It was eventually revealed that Ben failed two voluntary drugs tests for the female fertility drug clomiphene in the build-up to the fight. Ben maintains his innocence throughout, previously blamed contamination for the findings. Last month, the WBC reinstated Ben to its rankings, finding in their investigation there was no conclusive evidence that Mr. Ben engaged an intentional or knowing ingestion of clomiphene and claimed the findings could have been caused by a highly elevated consumption of eggs. He's still under investigation by the UK Anti-Doping and British Boxing Board of Control and as such unable, unable to fight in this country without a licence. Simon, back in October, yep. um, in your TalkSport boxing show with mm. Spencer, mm. you called Eddie a coward. Yep. It wasn't a comment that went down too well with Eddie and his people. Why did you make that observation? Because he was a coward. Not a coward in character, but a coward in his behaviour. There's a vast difference between the two, and I've qualified that on a number of occasions. So if he wants to take offence, he should get over it. He's a big boy, apparently. And if you're a big boy and you don't like something that someone says about you, you do two things. You either issue a writ against them for defamation, or you come and debate them and put them in a place. You did neither because you couldn't, and you ducked it, and you did it with other people. But the reasons why I said it is because he's got plenty to say for himself. He is the archetypal walking, talking, singing canary when it suits him. When it comes down to a situation where there's a scenario where he needs to put forward his best foot in a situation which is shrouded in inconsistencies, misrepresentations, a load of him by him, he should have done a damn sight better than do a press conference saying, I'm not going to say anything and then goes off and flaps his gums about what he is and isn't going to do, and then tells the world that the media misrepresented him. It's nonsense. I mean, it's Eddie, nonsense. at the time you said you wanted to quote slap Simon. Yeah, I didn't like what he said, because it's not, it's not the Simon Jordan world. I mean, we did hundreds of media outlets around that. The time of the press conference, we were actually... We still had so much information to come from the investigation that we were advised that we, didn't, we couldn't say anything until that developed further. We then got to a point where things had evolved and we chose to speak to the media. I just, I didn't want to come on the show. I didn't like what he said. And the, the key here is, I don't think he understands the sport, the disciplinary matters, the oh, procedure. Oh, That's can't. a big assumption Listen, on your part, mate. Oh, okay, I'll ask you a question. Go ahead. Through the whole process of this, what would you have done? Forget, forget the press conference. Yeah, I've heard that bit. What would you have done in my position? A lot differently okay. to what you did, my let's, son. let's go. 
Right? Let's go. What, what would you I, have changed? What I would have done is I would have taken the best course of action with best practice in mind. I would have looked at the fact, right, that I've got two contracts. I've got a contract with a fighter and I've got a contract with the opponent. And I'd have looked at what my obligations are under both. And I'd have looked at the situation, because you're quite clever, Eddie, you're quite smooth and you're quite manipulative. And what you do is you let the world see the things through your eyes. What you do is you say, I can't pull this fight. You could have pulled that fight. No, I couldn't have pulled Yes, you fight. could. No, absolutely Eddie, not. Eddie, are you telling me... Oh, let me finish. Yeah. Are you telling me you haven't got a contract with a fighter, Conor Bem, that if he brings uh, this, himself into disrepute for a failed drugs test, that you wouldn't be able to drop him as a promoter? No. And uh, the, the contract... So, the con so, if you let me... If so you let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just qualify okay, cool. a bit further. Right? So if you haven't got that contract, which basically means that most people with a sensible outlook would have a contract with somebody that if they bring themselves in the sport and to distribute and can't be fit for purpose, they would be then be able to jest in that contract. Given the fact that you are a walking embodiment of all things VADA, right? Everything's VADA for you. You pulled Pascal fight with um, B B Boatzi because of VADA. No, I didn't. Uh, well, you, uh, no, I Demetrius didn't. Again, Andre, again, Andre. Again. Well, let me go through You're the list of the, okay. let me go through the well, VADA ones. Demetrius right? Andre is the best, the best option. Go right. through that one because okay. you don't really don't know what you're talking we'll, about. We'll, cool. we'll also go through the Joel Miller one. No, no, go you back talk to Demetrius Andre. Okay, because that's important. Billy Joe Saunders, not my fighter, not your fighter, yeah. gets dealt with on the basis of VADA tests that were failing him for a drug in Massachusetts that wasn't a drug that would needed to be failed in this country for an out of competition position. Absolutely irrelevant. You, you do realise what you said. Relevant. Okay, I've Not got irrelevant. Demetrius Andrade. Yep. Frank Warren has got Billy Joe Saunders, mm -hmm. who fails a VADA test. Mm -hmm. Okay. The British Boxing Board of Control write to me and say, we appreciate that Billy Joe, so without looking into the substance, without looking in, into the out of competition existence, and say to us, we do not acknowledge in any condition VADA testing. Only UCAD testing. Now, let me answer your but that's point. that's not true, no, no. is it? Yes, it but absolutely no, no, it's is. not true. Well, hold on, hold on. How but, can it be but, not but, be true? But it's not true. When the British Boxing well, Board of Control have confirmed well, that in writing. Am I, am I wrong? Am I wrong to suggest, right, that a VADA test or any private laboratory test that is sanctioned or under the accreditation of WADA, then, if it brings an adverse finding gets them brought into the realms of UCAD. No, you're wrong. I'm wrong, am I? You're wrong because it's in writing from the British okay. Boxing Board of Control. I've, I can well, I'm wrong under the auspice of what you say, no, no, but no. everyone else in the industry no, no, doesn't think that. This is where you fail to understand no, your version the of it. regulatory procedure of the sport. When you go back to the contracts, the contracts state, and all contracts, under the sanction of the British Boxing Board of Control, we do not govern the sport. Despite you thinking, and many people thinking, we are boxing. No, I don't. No, no. Listen. No, you think that. No, no. no I don't no, think that. No, Simon. The board govern the sport. No, I don't let think me that. Finish. But I don't think that. Okay, let me finish. No, but you don't have to think that. That's fact. The board govern the sport. They are the regulatory body. They are the disciplinary body. Correct. All matters regarding sanction of a fight rely on the British Boxing Absolutely. Board of Control. Contractually, in the instance of this, we have two, two things we have to consider. Number one is, if the bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Right. If it's not, the fight contractually cannot proceed. Regarding the private testing between the two parties, the board cannot sanction the fight. Chris Eubank can terminate the contract. Mm -hmm. Chris Eubank chose to not terminate the contract. The board, who were made aware of the testing results... On the 23rd of August? No, right? on the same time as us. Yeah, 23rd of August. Okay, the, for, for, the yeah. out of, for the out of contract yeah, yeah, testing. Yeah. You, you, had, you, had a, you had a VADA test on the 23rd of July, right? Mm -hmm. And you, enro you enrolled in me because you made a big noise about it yesterday. You made a big noise about Matrim putting the money up, and Conor Ben putting the money up to enrol him in a voluntary scheme. But it ain't voluntary, is it? It's a mandatory test as a result of wanting to be ranked inside the top 15 of a WBC. No, again, you're wrong. So, There's no, no cost of affiliating yourself with that You're the one that said it, mate. No, no, I didn't. You turn around and we, said... We pay you for private testing you, above and you're beyond the You're the one that said it yesterday. Layer. You made a big noise because when you, were on your, when you were on your little soapbox talking about how the world should be, you represented the way you want it to. So the 23rd of July, a VADA test was commissioned on the basis of, of Conor Ben being inside the WBC top 15. Not a voluntary test, a mandatory test as a result of that particular prerequisite. You have to voluntary enrol. But, but it's mandatory to have it if you want to be inside the top 15 in the WBC. You have to voluntary enrol. But you is have that to, true, though? Yeah, of course. But it's man it's mandatory up. to be no, no, inside no. the top 15. But it's 15. mandatory. If you want to enrol, but it's, it's completely voluntary. But it's mandatory if you want to be inside the right. top if, 15. If you want right. to be, it's up to you to yeah. voluntarily yeah. enrol. Yeah. Right. I mean, so, here, so here we are. You announce a fight there on afterwards, which you announce on August the 9th, pending a test result, which is not no. relational to... Hang no. on. Relational to the fight. You get the results back on the 23rd of August, right? Who knew on the 23rd of August? You? The British Boxing Board of Control. I know did. Who else? Uh, the WBC. Who else? That's, un again, Simon, under the WBC testing programme. Listen, I understand. Listen, let me speak. 
it's a it's the confidential procedure, yep. right? That has nothing to do with us. Under that is the people made aware of that test. Did you tell Wasserman's? No, because it because one, it was not in their jurisdiction of testing. Two, but you, but you made a but, fight, Eddie. But you, you, you the signed fight a, was already you, made. Hang on, you signed a fight. Now you've got an adverse test finding. That's it. And you didn't tell Wasserman's. Yeah, because it's so confidential. When Chris, so when did Chris Eubank know? It's confidential under the WBC program. This is what I don't understand. The British Boxing Board of Control knew about the test. Yeah. The same time. With, just let me finish. And what did you lot do? No, but let me hang finish. On, hang on, let me finish. Me. Right. And from there, you don't ask the question. I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. saw your interview. No, you didn't. It was so flaky. No, no you didn't. You no, go. Didn't. It, it was so I, flaky I, I, I because to, you take your jobs at me, and then when you no, get no, the no, opportunity, no, 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 no. with the governing body, I, I saw who that. knew about it. I saw that rubbish. The same time. I saw that rubbish. The same time I, as I, me. I saw that bait and switch. What you said the other day, because basically you said he didn't even. Ask, the first question I asked. Not really. No, I, I, not in your normal way. Absolutely. The first question, because I know you have got this little conspiracy thing going on in your little mind. The the bottom line is, is the first thing that went on, and I asked Robert Smith is, why haven't you? How comes you lot? As this sport runs. Is it the promoters at the top, the me the fighters second, the media third, and you lot at the very bottom? How, how does it work that you lot have gotten pushed around by that Herbert Eddie Hearn? How have you got yourself again, into that's, situation? That's your world. That's right. your world. So, so, contractually, so, 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 during so, the process, so then I asked we Robert go Smith, to the ball and, and you heard him, right? And you, and, and you heard him turn around and say, I said, did you get served something vaguely resembling a cease and desist from Conor Ben's lawyers about wallop? Hang on a second, there's an adverse test finding, you get back in your boxes. And the answer was... Yeah, you could say. That. So I said to him, "Hang on a second. How have you not? You got pushed around by these guys. No, that, you're the British. You're the British Boxing Board of no control. How can you possibly not be dealing with this?" Eddie but, Simon, I tell you what. At quarter past eleven, we'll take time out. But I want you to ponder this, Eddie. We'll come back with this because as a gold standard boxing promoter, and you are, are you proud in any way of the whole Ben Eubank Junior affair and how it was handled, particularly in Fight Week? How can you be? I want you to think about that, Eddie, when we come back. Conor Ben, your fighter. Eubank Jr., Callis Sauerland's fighter. Um, the fight was called off because Conor failed not one, but two drugs tests. If we keep it simple, regards to testing, people understand it an awful lot more. If the failed drugs test, Eddie, had never been leaked to the newspapers, would you have happily put the fight on knowing what you knew? How close were you to being involved in what would be perceived to be a big drugs cover-up? Because contractually, as I said to Simon, we rely on the sanction of the British Boxing Board of Control. When these tests were uncovered, it went straight to the governing body of the sport, the, sport, the, regula the regulatory arm, the disciplinary committee, if you like, to make a decision. There's also a lot of rubbish about leaking of the, the so press. So you have no control as to whether the fight was going to go on or not? None at all. Contractually, regardless of what Simon wants to say, and he acknowledges this, and I'm happy to debate it further, contractually, in the fight contract with Chris Eubank Jr., the only people, the way that fight gets cancelled is if the British Boxing Board of Control do not sanction the fight or Chris Eubank Jr. terminates the agreement due to, due to the testing. Chris Eubank Jr. wanted to proceed with the bout. The board took five weeks to make a decision. I go on record to say the board made the correct decision. I wish they wouldn't have waited five weeks. There's also rubbish out there to say, and I back the board on this actually, where they say the board didn't sanction the fight because it got leaked to the press. So as soon as we found out here and everybody else found out that Conor Ben has failed two drugs tests, were you then pushing there and then for the fight to be called off? The fight was already not sanctioned by the British Were Boxing Board Were you pushing the, for the, the fight to be called off? Yes. I, I, on that day? Do you know who pulled the fight? On yes, that day? On that day, that night. I pulled the fight that night. We had various options. Number one was an injunction. Number two was to work with another governing body or regulatory arm, of which I really didn't want to do. The mistake that I made, and I stand by that, in this, and I believe the only mistake, I don't think it was handled perfectly by anybody. The big mistake that I made is when I rocked up to the uh, workout on the Wednesday... I'd literally received the letter from the British Boxing Board of Control an hour before. I faced the media and myself and Callis Allen couldn't believe this process had been going on for five weeks and all of a sudden, what are we going to do? I shouldn't have said, we're looking at our options. I should have just taken it and I believe the board made the right decision. I had the option, and so did Calla, to proceed with the fight. So why did you say we're considering our options? Because there and think, then, it looked as if you put money ahead of morals. Yeah, I think, look, we were... Do you regret that? Yeah, I do regret um, considering our options. I do. Because I think the board made the right decision. 
I was a bit shell shocked. All of a sudden, I had a hundred cameras asking me questions. What are you going to do? And what I said was, look, the British Boxing Board of Control have told us they don't acknowledge Vada. They only acknowledge UCAD. He's had four UCAD tests in the run up to this fire. Everyone is negative. And we need to consider our position. I want to bring that Simon a in a second. Eddie, Sarolin told us on the day of the drugs test reveal that both teams were given specific independent medical advice on the drug in question. He claimed both fighters were happy to carry on. Since when should it be up to the fighters to choose which banned substance they can or can't fight with? It's not. It's up to the British Boxing Board. But that's what it looked like. No. Chris Eubank Jr. and Sowland. Sowland had their own individual uh, analysis, medical analysis with Chris Eubank Jr. regarding the testing, the other test dates around it, the test that he'd fails, the levels of the test. And they, the, the specialists believed that it was non-performance enhancing and we were prepared to proceed with the bout. Ultimately, if the British Boxing Board of Control do not sanction the fight, which is what happened, the fight does not take place. But you, you were in line with that. You were in line with that. I mean, it's, it is pretty preposterous to suggest that anyone can have a commentary, irrespective of the PED, to suggest, I'll allow my fighter, who shredded weight, who should have been told, it would seem not been told, uh, on the 23rd of August that someone has an adverse drug finding, hasn't been told, according to you, until the second drugs test. He's now fully trained, fully in, in, in a situation, going for what I think was a freak show of a fight anyway, at a catch weight level. And now you're in a situation where, ultimately, you and Callie... We're looking at an opportunity to be able to use your influence or find an outcome that suited you best. The reasons why you mentioned about alternate routes is because that's precisely what you meant. And then you looked at it and maybe your dad tapped on your shoulder and gave you a bit of advice and said, son, let's have a listen to this. You go and get an injunction against the British Boxing Board of Control. First of all, you're probably not allowed to get it. Second of all, second of all if you do get it, son... What's going to happen is you're going to be the promoter that put on a, a fight with a boxer overcoming a technicality no. in a drug situation. He, so we, you were done. No. So then what you did is you regained, you regained your composure and thought, I'm not having any of this, and I'll pay her back from it. But if you look at the whole sequence of events, the lot of you, the lot of you, Callie, you, and the fighter, the fighter had an opportunity to deal with the British Boxing Board of Control. A, an adverse finding goes to them. Despite your protestations, any WADA accredited laboratory finds an adverse finding, then gets caught by UCAD. So with that in mind, the British Boxing Board of Control asked your fighter to give them some information. He refused. He told oh, him to go no. do one. And then what they did was they sanctioned him there on afterwards because, not because of the refusal to provide him with tests, but because he refused to cooperate with them in their investigation to find out what the hell was going no, on. They didn't sanction him. The, the no, board, they, they the board have made it clear with precedence that they do not acknowledge VADA testing. This is the whole issue around their rules. They only acknowledge... They acknowledge adverse... No, vo- yes, no, they do, no, they yes, Simon, they do. Simon, you're not well, aware of... Uh, well, well, we had t- the whole situation well, with well, Billy Joe Saunders. What, you, tell you what, the British Boxing Board of Control... Yeah, who now you, say, oh, we need, we need to look at our rules. Because you've already told them and said they're liars, right? No, I didn't. I yes, said, yes, I said, did. I said, yes, did. as you what I've said the whole time, they took... The whole thing on this... Simon, the whole thing on this no, you said is that, an right? attack on us no, it's rather not. than the British Boxing Board of Control, no, who not. you had sitting next to you, no, right? Who took five weeks to make a decision. We get a situation like this because because they because didn't know what you to do lot, and they made the right and decision. And your fighter Absolutely not. issued Nothing cease and desist, right? No, no, we didn't. A lot of no, we pressure. didn't. No, we didn't. Whole, whole you, 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 you hey, well, guys, uh, uh, we're not going to hear the if you both talking over each other. Because the problem with you is, this is what you do. You speak to Robert Smith without... It's like Eddie Hearn did this. This is a situation. They were made aware at the same time, right? Wait. Agreed. Okay, wait. Agreed. Wait. Stop. I mean, Simon, you're hypothesizing here. No, no, no. Simon, I think it's reasonable supposition. Simon, I'll put it to you the same way again. In your, in my situation, and I yeah. stand by this, and you can say, no, I would have done this, I would have done that. You would have done the same thing. You speak to the governing body. Maybe back in the day it was the FA. And you say, you are designed to handle this situation. You're the regulatory body. You're the disciplinary committee. Take away your player contracts, which might be different in football. And now we say, it's up to the FA to make their decision. Just like us. The way a fight proceeds... But they've got legislative powers, Eddie. This no. one hasn't. This one's funded by you no, lot. No, no. It's, it's got, funded by, no, it's funded no, it's by got you got the lot. decision to sanction a fight or not. What are you talking on about? On the basis... No, no, no. On, on the basis of... On the basis of, of information. No. Which no one will no, provide. On the to basis them. of... You're saying to me... Right? Oh, how can you proceed with two failed tests? No. Why don't you, you ask the you, board I, I how they done. can proceed? No, you, you haven't. You, have. you flitted I, around I have. it. The reality no, is, you we start, get you the start, stress. You started this we get the stress. The, well, the board. Boy, that's what the you get board. I don't care about stress. As we I want to, to be acknowledged. 
The board make the decision. Eddie, as they we, go, as we go to a break, I, I want you to answer this straight, Eddie. Can you in any way be proud of yourself in the way this entire affair was handled, particularly in fight well, you, week? You've asked that question as well, and I've, I've responded before. I think I made mistakes on a Wednesday. During this process, we let, and I keep going on about it, contractually, everything that we did was done with care and thought. I think nobody particularly handled the situation well, but I will say once again, when these tests come through, our governing body, we had conversations with them, and the conversations went something like this. Robert, I know you don't acknowledge VADA, we've been here before, but basically, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And five weeks later, they pulled the fight. Now, the, the other people say about my mistake of backing Conor Ben. I say this, I believe Conor Ben. There has been no benefit to me from a, a profile way or from you know perceived integrity position to back Conor Ben. It would have been so easy for me just to cast him aside and say, well, you know, after I'm not sure, but I believe the young man. And I've stood Do by Do you believe him, him still? 100%. Still? 100%. I've sat with him. I've sat with his family. And by the way, no one can criticise me for that. Because let me tell you, it would have been so easy. But you wait, know, but you wait, know, the, you know wait, Simon. Just wait. On. You're the only person who loves the sound of his own voice more than me. I don't Be know quiet. about that. <laughs> well, it's true. But what I'm saying, Simon, is I have chosen to back this young man. I've taken flack. I've taken criticism. People have told me, don't do it. Distance yourself from it. Is that because you can't get over it now? No. Mate, it would be easy for me to get out of it. I've done it because I believe in Jim. I've done it because I believe in the young Did man. Did you want who Connor sat... to speak to Piers Morgan and talk to you? No, I've had. I have not given Connor. Did ben. you know he was going to do that? Yes, I was made aware on the day that it was coming out. I have not on given... the day. Yep, yeah, I've not given Connor Ben one piece of advice from a media perspective, from a legal perspective, or anything. One thing I stand by is I've had this young kid in my office three dozen times. I've had his dad in my office. I've had Tony Sims in his office, and I believe him. And did, I stand by that. Conor what ben, we're going to do did, at the moment, Ben's Dad's lawyers issue a cease and desist against the British Boxing Board Control. Seen. Well, I'm pretty sure that they did. Oh, and you, right? well, you said I, we, I, I, we, I, I, you were putting okay, pressure well, on the board. Let's pair that back from you. Right? But the one question that you started this conversation with is what I would do in comparison to what you would do. And that's where the argument started. And right, I'll tell you what. Uh, David uh, is trying to tell me Simon's got Eddie in trouble here. Eddie's legs are wobbling. Simon's hitting with snippy, snappy, verbal jabs. Do you feel as if you're in trouble, Mr. Oh, really? I, mean, I wish you would have kept the conversation going off there as well. We haven't stopped, but I, I'm enjoying it. And I, did, you know, I just... You're this, getting this, very this, personal with each other off here, really, I've got really, to say. Not really, in not really. personal. I mean, I don't agree with a lot of what he's saying. No, but he's Ultimately. Say, he's saying silly things, right? What he, what he believes is that if someone puts him on the spot and asks a pointed question and doesn't let it go and then, then, and then dissects his answer and disseminates the information, that's somehow controversial. No, what, what I what said you, to, actually, what I said to you was, you've got three or four things factually incorrect, which you completely fail to acknowledge. I don't because accept Because in that. your world, you run boxing, you are the government no, 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 body, no, no. you are the British Boxing Board of Control. Not at all. That's I a work what in this sport. That's 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 listen, Simon, I wouldn't come to you and say, you know, ultimately, this is how mobile phones work, or this is how Crystal Palace works. That's yep. your field. Absolutely. My field is I do this but every you, single day. But you, you underestimate. You're, you're coming this, out with facts that you think There's common correct. sense there's involved not, in all businesses, not, Eddie. I know. It's not I know common it's sense when it's a regulatory. There's common, there's common sense. Guys, yeah, yeah, there's one. There's one listener saying, "Listen, guys, I'm loving this, but when they both talk at the same well, time, we can't hear." If you've got what, strong what I want to put you, are going to talk at the same time. What I want to do is put this to you, Eddie, just to confirm. You cannot pull a fight which involved drug boxers without the board doing so. Is that right? The so as a promoter, you can be promoting a fight against your will with doped fighters. You wouldn't be against your... Ultimately, contractually, the board make a decision whether they sanction the fight. Yeah, but and you if, have the relationship with the fighter. Simon, you're completely it's, disregarding no, the contractual issue of the only way that that you fight can drop that, no, hold on. could be you, pulled. You'd have to promote it, do you? Of course I've got an obligation. Well, no, I've, got, no, I've got a POS if, with a fighter to, to a, promote that fight. I can't breach that agreement if the British Boxing okay, Board well, of Control sanctions Let me, ask, sanction you, let me ask you the question. If you've got a fighter, and I will ask it again because I, I don't know why this seems to have evaded you, but you've got a fighter that's signed to you that will have a condition, I'm assuming, that if he brings himself into disrepute or you, you into disrepute alongside it, right, that you will have a right no. to step away. You, you don't no, have that. because that right of disrepute is under the regulatory arm of the British Boxing Board of Control. Let me finish. Yeah. If a fighter fails to be sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, we will have a clause within the agreement to individually terminate that agreement. It's all done. You had a moral no, no, choice. No, no, you no, had we, a didn't, moral we didn't. Choice. We had no moral choice. We had a legal choice. Right. The so, British Boxing Board of Control will decide whether so the fight is going to be sanctioned. So you're positioning this 
even though you continued with this with a second failed test on the 21st of we September. We didn't continue. We you, waited for you, the board you, to you, make their decision. And you know full well, and you do know full well, that the board were put in a position, and I'm not here to defend the board because I'm the first well, you, person. You no, no, hang on. I'm the one that walks around calling the British Boxing Board a no control. I'm the one that went after them for their appalling performances over Jack Catterall, their appalling performances over Bradley Skeets. I've had as much to say about other people as I have about you. So you need to get over your victims' complex about everyone's centres on you. You operate as a gold chip promoter. Wonderful. £60 million turnover, £12 million profit, lovely, lovely dividends. You're a big boy, right? No one's got a conspiracy theory against you, mate. What they're trying to do is one of the biggest events in boxing is make people accountable. Because I think you're accountable. I think you should be sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control because I think you uh, under and Cali, on the basis uh, uh, of the fact that you try to get a fight on. Under the basis. You try to get this no, fight no, no. on. Uh, under the basis, Simon, that the British Boxing Board of Control were made aware of the test results on the same day that we were. Correct. And ultimately and they were given that, they? their position of what they have to do, which is decide whether they and sanction they didn't get a fight a cease or not. And they not from, not from Simon, me. Stoke, but you Simon know has touched on something you know there, Eddie. Now, you have admitted that after... The, the, the drug test failure was revealed and we were all on it. We were on it. We were right across it in here. The fight's going to get scrubbed. He's not going to go in Conor Ben against Chris Eubank Jr. You said earlier, you came out and you made a mistake by saying we were considering all our options. You didn't shut it down then, Eddie. Yeah, I shut it and down. And when you said considering all your options, one of your options was it was hoping that the fight would still go ahead, right? Only if we chose to go down that route of which we decided not to. Ultimately, this fight could have happened could have happened. I made the decision for it not to happen. Now, Simon can say, it's because my dad told me so. Absolute rubbish. I sat there. I thought about it. I let the ego calm down, the madness calm down. And, you know, when you talk about the money side, yeah, the five weeks that the board took to make the decision cost us a million quid. No problem. Like Simon says, we're big boys. I wish they would have made the decision straight away. And by the way, it would have been the correct decision. And we so would have dealt with it Do you think it it's then. a good contract? Stay out of kiosk. Let's just go down your route and subscribe to your point of view. Because you asked me, you said to me from the outset, you, I did precisely what you would have done. You didn't, right? And then I, I did. Uh, but, but, then, but then you but tell then, me, hang okay, on, you don't know what I would have done. You don't know what I would have done. Go on then, right? tell us. And second of all, in the next breath, you tell me I don't know what I'm doing because this isn't a game okay, I would have done. Tell us what you so would have done. I can't, you couldn't have done tell what I would have done. Tell us what you would have done. What I would have done is I'd have had a contract with my fighter in place. Oh, okay. well, I, well, then, hindsight. Do, do, do I mean, you need the answer? No. Go on, go on. Well, best in class doesn't need hindsight, do they? Go on. You're go on. the best in class, aren't you? True. Right, so then you don't need hindsight, do you? Let's hear it. So with that in mind, you've got a situation where you've got fighters, I would have signed them to a contract which basically prohibited them from bringing me into any space or any place that compromises any outcome or damages my business. And a drug test being failed, whether it's a voluntary, mandatory scheme, right, would have brought me into that space. And that would have put me in a position where I, as the promoter, had a choice to whether I continued to go on with this fight or find reasons alongside Cali Sauron to get this fight on and push back and create influence and be a powerful person that's licensing fees, help fund the British Boxing Board of Control, and all that needs to be changed as well. And legislation needs to be put in place so they've got some teeth with you guys. And that's what I would have done. So that's different okay. to what you've done, okay. right? Okay. Now, the reality of the situation, not, you didn't like the word hindsight, is that our contracts with the fighters are dependent on sanction from the British Boxing Board of Control. I'm not saying that your idea of what maybe should be in a contract following this event is not correct. I'm just telling you, so you can acknowledge my position, that everything regarding the sanction of a fight or of a fighter is, dependent is based on, on British... And that's truth. I can't, you know, what? so... Bad contract, isn't it? Not necessarily, but maybe but looking got back you, on this... It's got you in a isn't it? Uh, listen, it is it's what it is. It's cost you half a bar, isn't it's, it? It's this, more. A million quid. Yeah, about that. It's yeah. fine. But, but, what did it cost but, you altogether, but, but, Eddie? How much did it cost you? A million you? quid. A million? Yeah, about that. I mean, but it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr T and Ken says he's a big fight I mean, fan. Actually, not, not Eddie, just... this is a load of rubbish. Anyone with any sense would have pulled a contract for immediately but, but, but bringing the fight back game contract, into this This is one thing that you, you know inside out, right? Contractually completely impossible for me. If you acknowledge of what I've just said... If I acknowledge that, yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm telling and you, I mean, I'm happy comment. to share that. And that's a fair comment. Okay. Contractually, legally, I have no position at all other than let the board make their decision. Do you acknowledge that? I do. But ask the question, because the answer I can't get from you or anyone else, why would the board want to put themselves in this awful invidious position... I think to, that fanny, a to fanny about. Well, it's not a difficult decision, it, it, is it? It is it's they, because they, they regularly sanction people. They get people in front of them for doping. But, yeah, finish but, your question. Yeah, sorry, go on, go on. So why, why would, in your view, besides a difficulty of decision, and that's what they're paid to do, and that's Robert Smith's job, and that's mm. the board's responsibility, why would the board take 
from the 23rd of August, which is when the first adverts come in, all right, on the back of the voluntary mandatory testing regime, Wait, the second one goes out on the 30th. You do a UCAT test in the middle of it, which gives you a negative, which you like. Four, and it suits, four UCAT well, it suits your argument, right? But you've still got two failed four, ones, two, and that could be cycles. Yeah. We all know that, right? So we get onto the 23rd of September. There's another one, right? Why would the board put... Cause you know these people. I think... I you, think you, can, you are fund them. Why would these people be in such an invidious situation for seven weeks they can't make a decision. I think it's because they were put under immense pressure. No, I think there were cease and desist put upon them. No, and I, I think, think they should have had more teeth, is yeah, what I think. I think they also had the issue of precedence around the VADA testing. And you again, you, you're not acknowledging that, but they have, you know, through that whole process, confirmed several times, and actually in the Dillian White situation, that they do not acknowledge VADA testing. Simon, but I that's think not they, true, Eddie. No, it is they, true. They acknowledge VADA Simon, testing in Simon, the advent of Simon, an adverse if, analytical if you finding. Want me to to show you, please do. Where I will, please do. I will. It. I will. Where they confirm in please that do. instance that fire, they do not acknowledge VADA. When was this? Rodgers. The Billy Joe Saunders. What, two years ago? Yeah, but well, okay. we're talking so about precedent. So they, they, but they haven't changed since then. The, the, the WBC. No, okay. Their rules have not changed. Well, that'll be clear. Right? Simon, that'll be clear. On yeah. this, the WBC have said, yeah, this could have been caused by a highly elevated consumption of eggs. Right. You go with that. You know I don't go with that. You, you've, heard, you've heard me talk. And Connor Ben doesn't go with that. There are there are issues. Well, and, and like, what do you think to that? What do you think to that? What? Did you, did you expect the WBC to be a witness for the defence? Uh, I expected because that's what they were, weren't they? No, a witness ultimately, for the again, I go through this. I wasn't on one call, one second. Have you read the two hundred and seventy no, page report? No, I've read a, a number of the key points. All right, right. Which what do you, know, you think to it? I think it's very concerning. What about what? About the accredited la uh, laboratory that's a WADA, te no, no. A WADA attested one about that's failed a no About a number of things. That some things that were said in the Pierce Morgan interview, there's a lot of things that happened... Where's the B samples, Eddie? The B samples? What do you mean, for where's the, the B samples? Where, where's the B samples for the 23rd of July test? They've, they've been tested. Have they? Yes. We've and, never seen the results, have we? You have, because you heard about the, the problems with the accreditation, as you just said then. You talked... If you, no, that's if in you the, two, that's the, the, that's in the 270 page report. No, no. The Pierce no Morgan interview is pretty clear. Yes, they have. Nobody's talked about it. Yes, you, they have. you said, hang on, you. You said the other day <laughs> the reasons why they didn't have the B samples was because there was a t t the, 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 the outcomes on the 23rd of September. They, you were asked in an interview, where's the B samples? And you said, uh, they've only just got the results from two weeks ago. They haven't got the B samples no, yet. That's no, what you said. No, that's your own no, words. No, I mean, you, you, S no, that's your own words. No, no, no. Secondly, you can get B samples tested within 24 hours, and well, you know it. No. And the tests from the 23rd of July have had eight weeks for the B samples. You, to be you have out. to send a representative to have that test. And there's all issues around that, which Conor Ben talked about in the interview with, with him. I'm not here to defend Conor Ben's 270-page document. What I will tell you about the WBC findings are they asked him to provide all his dietary requirements, exactly what he consumed, in relation to the trace elements that were found in the test and the tests around that that were clear by various other bodies, mm -hmm. including VADA and UCAD. They came up with a reason. But you know, you know, you know Conor's biggest problem. You know what it is, don't you? It's strict liability, isn't it? That's his biggest problem, right? His biggest problem is, is it doesn't matter how you got in the system, you've got to account for it, and if you can't account for it, then you, your next best alternative is to prove no intent, right? Because the standard straight out of the gate UK position and British Boxing Board position is you've got something in your system, strict liability, which is different from WBC nonsense, which is irrelevant, they've got no jurisdiction. He's got a four-year ban coming down the no, pike. The best thing you can do is appeal that and maybe get two. No, you need to prove of a contamination. Strict liability. Uh, no, no. There's been many other incidents where fighters haven't been banned by proving a contamination or a failing in the process. It's, it's and there's not, been many when it hasn't happened. Uh, absolutely. Many, 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 but but right, Eddie, guys, with that, guys, guys, that was a VADA test that did that. We're both unaware of it. We haven't scrubbed the ad but breaks. The same thing, Simon, we haven't scrubbed the ad breaks. We're going to take one, then we'll come back to that Piers Morgan interview. Eddie Heron in live with Simon and myself. Uh, there is Paul, one of many. Jim, only one way to sort this. Simon and Eddie fight each other for charity. 100, 100 quid pay per view for that. Massive what are, what money. 12? What are we, 12? What am I, no, 12? It might you're, be the only one I could win. You're supposed to be a blue chip promoter. You can't run around slapping people because no, you don't like what charity. they say. Eddie Heron with a charity. Well, I went up to the charity event on a weekend. I didn't start slapping people. Uh, well, no, well, I'm going to do it imagine, myself. Imagine. Guys, I'm going to jump into the squabbling here because, be Eddie, am I right? Be. What are the you want? Simon. 14 and a half. Oh, am I right? No, good. You're going to stay until 12.30. You're going to stay until 12.30. Whatever you want to use me and abuse me for, Jim, I'm here.
Uh, no, but you're giving well, us well, figures, well, mate, well, aren't you? True we're not gonna, or not? We're not no, not really. You. Oh, come on. Not really. Mate. Well, we're going to do the listen. other side of 12 noon. We're going to talk Keeping about you in a job. You need to go look what? at your contract. Keeping you in a job. Can I get a word in? The other side of 12 noon, we're going to talk about AJ, your fighter, fighting Franklin. Where is AJ now? We're also going to talk about Fury, you say. Because well, I know, uh, I know yeah, you've got actually, a few things yeah. you want to say on that. Re- remarkably, I agree I with Mr. Jordan on oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Simon, Simon I want to round off this Conor Ben thing. Vada, wada, who did this, who did what? Conor Ben, without you knowing until the day of the interview, you've conceded. Film it, did, film an, it, yeah. did yeah. an interview with Piers Morgan on talk TV. And he said, look, Connor's, he said he's, he's got a dossier that, that completely proves his innocence. So then Piers Morgan moved in and said, all right, why not release the dossier? I still don't think that proves my innocence at all. I've just been cleared by the organisation which the test in which I failed. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to counter that agenda by making public this dossier. Because I don't know what it is they got in for me. I don't know what, I don't know what, what vendetta it is. Yeah, but it's are. like saying you're accused of killing someone. OK, but I've, been massive... proved, but I've been proven innocent no, no, by you're... the authorities that well, run that test. I wouldn't say you've been proven innocent. They just couldn't well, they've produce... Well, just give me the clear. They've said you're... They said... There was no conclusive evidence. Just to be clear exactly what they said, right? It's not an absolutely unequivocal, you're definitely innocent. Now, Piers Morgan had a point, Eddie, did he not? You've got this dossier that proves your innocence. Let's have a look at it. I agree. I agree. I think, to be honest with you, I think there's a lot that happened around disciplinary charges not in relation to the testing. Yeah, but hang on, Eddie. Yuri's promoter. Why doesn't Connor produce this dossier? because at the moment he's in a legal position with the British Boxing Board of Control. I agree with you and I agree with Simon mm-hmm. and it's very important to me, regardless of what you think, that Conor Ben fights in this country again. The only way that's going to happen is if ego is dropped from both sides and Conor is... Eddie, we- you've, got, you've got a situation, mate, where you've got a fighter at this moment in time that's failed drugs test, right? And all I hear from you is how you're going to get him fighting again. Yeah. How he must get yeah. out fighting. Surely to Christ, he must get himself cleared and in a position. Okay. Right? And what you're doing is you're, you're, you're diminishing the argument about how important drugs are in the system of this sport by suggesting that the most important thing he needs to do is get out and fight. No, I think That's he's, outrageous, he mate. hasn't fought for a year. He's gone through this process with the WBC who are in charge of that testing process. They've cleared him. They've reinstated him in the rankings. He's clear to fight in any jurisdiction in the world other than in the UK. Mm-hmm. I completely agree with you. Yep. I want Conor Ben to get with the British Boxing Board of Control, to go through this process, I want him to resume his career in this country. So why country. is he not, why is he not doing reasons? that? Because at the moment, he has a legal situation with the board. He doesn't want to deal with the board. They try to but, slap but, a 100 but grand fine on him, not in I'm relation gonna, to I'm going to simplify oh, this and, and, before and not, we leave the Conor no, Ben situation. And I'm not saying to you it's correct. Right? I'm not sitting but here saying... But even his own father said on the Piers Morgan interview, which, by the way, I thought was a dreadful thing for him to have done, right? But the bottom line is, is that even his own father said he should face the British Boxing Board of Control. He's got a legal issue with them because they've slapped a 100 grand fine on him because he won't cooperate with the request for them to be able no, to adjudicate. No. Well, that's what the British Boxing no. Board of Control say. And, now, and with that in mind, the only reason I think he doesn't want to sit in front of... And I want Conor Ben not to be guilty. I've always wanted him to not to be guilty. I think he's a super kid. I hated the fight. I thought it was a legacy fight that makes you and those around you a lot of money. I didn't like it, and I didn't like the, the state of Chris Eubank when he shredded to get down to that way. And I'm not even going to bring his own father into it, right? And the, and, and, and the rantings and the discreditation that other people try to do with him. But the bottom line is, is the reason why he doesn't want to get in front, in front of the British Boxing Board of Control is the one terminology that no one likes, which is strict liability. Strict liability, yeah, and, and it's proven otherwise. And, and, the WB, and, I, and the WBC is a building block for smart-ass lawyers to try and find a way around it, but, and you but, know but, it is. He's not going to fight here again, Eddie, is he? Govern that testing. Ultimately, what he did was, know, he went but, to the people... But they've got no relevance, yeah, have they? But, but Simon, you can't ignore business, the fact it? that it's the testing programme. He had to go through that process. And with, you can't ignore the fact that UCAD has to respond, and, is, I, and any fighter that signs up to UK or any fighter any fighter that's sorry any fighter that's licensed which he was at the time he's always licensed mm-hmm. up now but at the time didn't he was licensed didn't, any, didn't renew it actually. okay didn't renew it then any fighter that's got a British boxing board license British boxing license has to accept the fact that the moment an adverse finding is done whether it's a private laboratory and a WADA approved private laboratory you can get jurisdiction and that's a fact okay it's and that's not, a fact. Then what and it's also a fact. There are other contracts but, but that you've got in place but it's not that enable fact. you to take no, fighters no, out of it and it's without, not a fact. without, without no, the and it's, body. No, and it's not and a fact. Is. No, and it's not a fact regarding precedence around VADA and UK testing. Precedent changes with new law. Let Eddie. me throw this at you. There's no new does. law in the, in the, in the such, rules of the British Boxing Board. Repu- such as a reputational damage on Conor Ben. 
We're not going to see him fight in this country again, are we? Yeah, absolutely, you are. He has to fight in this country. I mean, I don't want him to continue his career fighting just around the world. There's massive... Look, you've got every fighter the under the sun. sticks, Eddie. It's, Jim, you ask fight fans Jim, down the stairs Jim, at Jim, London Bridge, Jim. is he innocent or guilty? You know what you're going to get I know. back. And that's what he has to live with, whether he's played it badly, which he has at times, but he's played it real. But you're doing him a disservice. No, I'm not doing you him a disservice. You want him to fight Manny Pacquiao fight again. again. I'm, you want him no, to no, fight Kelbrook no, maybe somewhere else. Absolutely. Is. Listen, at the end of the day, it's been a year since he's fought. It's nearly a year since the test coming up in a couple of months. I've got every fighter under the sun wanting to fight Conor Ben. But why has it been a year? He's had six months to sit in front of the British Boxing Board of Control. He refuses to do his, his answer to the British Boxing Board of Control, and I know you won't condone this, is the reason why I won't sit in front of him is because they can do one. No, well, that's not... The, that's not a The debate. reason he doesn't want to is because of the way that he was treated in the initial process. He believes... But you're going to exacepate it. You're no. going to condone it by saying, no. I'm going to get him out. No, I'm, I'm going to get him no, out. I'm going to get him together. A big fight against Manny Pacquiao. No, I'm going to get him what together. What you should be doing is using your positive influence as a blue chip promoter saying, you don't fight until you deal with these no, guys. No, I won't but be doing won't. that. But what I will be but doing is, I want you to get in front of the British Boxing Board of Control. Oh, after he'd been paid and got fights in the fight centre. Because you should be making him do it properly. No, look, he's got options to fight. In many different Created jurisdictions. Created by you? No, not at all. Created by You're everybody. His called, you think I call? You think Kel Brook? You think I call, spoke to Kel Brook and say, "Oh, call him out all day on social media." No. Manny Pacquiao no, every right. day you're bombarding gonna, me wait, for Who's going to write the check? It depends where the fight is. You depends where the fight is. Wait, you're going to write the check, or you're going to be involved in the check but being he written. He has now been cleared by the WBC. No, he hasn't. In, yes, he has. No, he hasn't. Yes, he has. No, he hasn't. Yes, he no, has. He hasn't. Yes, he has. No, he hasn't. Yes, he has. He's been given mitigating no, circumstances. He's been, That's he's not been the same reinstated. As being cleared. He's been cleared to fight. He again. hasn't been cleared. Yes, he has. Let's finish. Hasn't off. been exonerated. He's, he's Let's, been finish off. Off. No. Let's finish this off. In a sentence, <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Convince the biggest skeptic out there in a sentence. Connor Ben. Innocent or guilty? I think, from what he just said two minutes ago, I think he thinks he's innocent in respect of particularly knowingly ingesting substances to improve his performance. I guess, and, and, I guess what no, happens no, no, then? No, no, no. Still gets banned. Yes, and, and actually, subject to proving that contamination. Intent. Okay, yeah, fair okay. Fair fair but enough. I think... Okay, Connor, prove it. But, but, but what prove I'm it. saying is... Away you go, son, yeah? prove it. Prove it. I agree. And, and you should be leading him by but, the nose, not making fun of him. So are you no, going to lead him forward then? A hundred percent. To proving his innocence? He has to sit down, in my opinion, with a British So we can count on you, Eddie... Yeah, you're, you're I, can't make the, I can't make the decision for Conor Ben. But you can, make, but you can make fights for him, though, can't you? Yeah. And so I, you I can't do, make the decision. So then you for remove it. the obligation upon him. If there's a pressure down on him to not be able to fight and he has to get in front of the British Boxing and Border Control under your direction and you refuse to promote him until he does it, he'll be in front I, of him. I refuse to promote him in this country. Because you can't. Yes, I can. I can go with another governing body. Oh, well done, you. Which is, which I, which which is what which you I wanted to do when you tried to get around it last time. All right. Never, ever, ever. I'm telling you now. One second, Jim. One second. I would never, ever, ever use another jurisdiction Good. in this country other than the British Boxing World Cup. Even Try though me. I feel like they handled this terribly. I would never, Ages ever... Ages and by you and Connor. No? You're going to play a big part, Eddie, in proving Connor's innocence before he fights again. Yeah, I mean, he's... Before ultimate, he fights ultimately, again. Ultimately, he's been cleared to fight again. Not in this country yet before until he, he fights down. in, regardless of where he, it is. He will fight in June. Whether that takes place... And the after or before a meeting with the British Boxing Board, and you're control, morally wrong we'll to do it. That. No, you're morally wrong to do it. Because Simon, yes, you, you know why? How can you be morally wrong when I believe in him and I believe he's innocent and he's clear to fight? You. I he's believe it's to twelve fight. noon, guys. In any we will talk no. Anthony Joshua. We will talk Tyson Fury in the next half hour. Eddie, Saturday, uh, the first of April, Talk Sport, as you know, will bring you live radio commentary of former world boxing champion Anthony Joshua's comeback fight against Jermaine Franklin. It's live from the O2 here in London. Fight night coverage will start from 7.30 on Talk Sport 2 with the main event on Talk Sport from 9. That's AJ Jermaine Franklin next Saturday, April the 1st. Stream the entire fight live on any device exclusively on DAZN. Download the app and sign up now at DAZN.com or watch it on Sky Channel 429 alright ok Ed, Eddie uh, Eddie is uh, telling us exactly where you can find it exactly uh, where you can get it AJ is back what what what, what? yeah DAZN right, Jim. DAZN TV <laughs> channel I'm just I'm just I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get this through my head but where can we find it a lot of people say to me right DAZN where can I get it do I get it in this country is it easy to find is it easy is it instantly oh, accessible so so easy to find and but we also understand the world we live in where a certain demographic of viewers would like to digest content in different ways 
the new age of broadcasting is unquestionably streaming. But there is still a large, st- still a large proportion of the market who like to watch it in a traditional manner. And I think when DAZN launched in this country, it wasn't with a view to have its own channel on Sky, but I think as it's evolved, Needs and I think as well to counter the sort of propaganda and argument of, oh, you can't find this platform. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but obviously... You, because some you boxers can. have left DAZN because they don't want to be on it. No, because people no. tell them they can't find it. No. Fighters have left DAZN and us because we haven't been willing to pay the numbers that other people ha- are who have no understanding of commercial Why did Josh Boatsy leave you? Because he was talked to by certain individuals that were willing to pay him a large amount of money to fight on a platform that he's fought on his whole career, by the way. It wasn't like he's never been there before. But he said that no one watched his fight against Greg yeah, Richards. He has absolutely no... Un- he's never been provided with and he's never been given any viewing figures at all. The reality is... There are more eyeballs, bigger viewing numbers globally on matchroom events than any other promoter in the world. DAZN's viewing figures are less than Sky, of course. DAZN also provides substantial viewing figures in all the key markets, including America, which Joshua Boatsy doesn't have a TV deal with, with a platform in America, or nor does that promotional company, for his fights. And ultimately... We're in a market at the moment, boxing has aggressive investors that are willing to pay inflated purses for fighters. And as a business, we have to look at those numbers and decide if we want to. Haven't you changed your tune, though, around fighters? Because it wasn't so long ago that you were running around telling everybody you don't need contracts and that you do deals on a shake of a hand and a handshake. Hands on the individual. Right, and then, well, of course, it would do for the purpose of this argument. And then when Josh Boazzi leaves, because he doesn't want to stay with you for three years after fighting Bivol, you get the with that. Again, like... Not three it, years in. No, three okay. fights. Okay, three well, fights. well, what we know is... Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll tell you what. Let, let's just go to that Franklin's Franklin's on Because I zone. think that we're very similar in many ways, me and you. Some some ways. But from a business sense... I'll let you have that. Let me put this to you. Go ahead. Joshua Boatsy, from the professional debut, is a matchroom fighter. Invested in him, his whole career... Right? And there's, it's a significant investment across persons. Are you ahead yet? Are you going to let... No, absolutely. No, miles behind. behind. Miles behind. Okay. Andre Bratzi. Miles behind. See, the ticket sales for the Craig Richards fight. That was a good example. And I've seen the viewing figures versus other fighters. That's why we have to make commercial decisions. Going back to that, we get him a British title fight. He gets a European title fight. Right? We box him at Madison Square Garden. We get him to number one in the world somehow because that's our job. And we walk him in to a £1.25 million fight with Dimitri Bivol for the world title which he in neutral territory. Which he acknowledges. Okay. Yeah. Now, his contract's up. Number one, Dimitri Bivol has to have a rematch clause. right? Mm-hmm. So we have to extend that contract anyway. Fair enough. We, we ask for a, a three-fight extension if he was to go on and win the world title for a huge amount of money, probably walk into the Canelo Alvarez fight for £7 million, like Callum Smith and, and Billy Joe Saunders did. That's complete industry standard. You've made a huge investment. And you've got a matching rights payday. and all that goes with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I so, I anyway, anyway, that. That, that's the situation there. The reality is he didn't. his team didn't want the Dimitri Bivol fight, which is no problem. But after that investment and getting to that position, we don't want another fight against an nobody where we're going to bleed money. We've given him the education. We've given him the platform. We've boxed him all around the world. Now's your chance to become world But chance. when you moved from... from, from I mean, I, I actually agree with you on the DAZN thing because I think VOD... If people can subscribe to Netflix, they can subscribe to DAZN. Mm. I actually don't think DAZN is a particularly good platform. Some of the content I've looked, watched it hasn't been very good. And it surprises me that you've got to put the price up to 19 and, and, well, that's, and whatever that's only if you, that's a, that's a only, if you don't, only if you don't subscribe. And if you don't pay 99 period. quid up front. Right? Or nine ninety nine a month. All right, OK. Mm. But the point for, for me is, is did any of these fighters, because they'll go with you, because I've always been a major advocate. I know how you pay your fighters. I know what you do and when you do it. Not what you pay them, but I know that you're straight down the line. No one mucks about you. They get paid on Monday morning after their fights. And I've always said that about you, both to you and about you. Is that right? a compliment? No, it's, a, it's absolutely a compliment, because but, in this game, a lot of them don't, right? And he's always done that. But that doesn't alter the facts that when these guys came with you, say a Coley or Boazzi that were with you, and they moved to the zone, they've all come away from it, or that's certainly in those two instances, with a great feeling that this might be all right for Matchroom, but it hasn't been particularly good for us. And then you're quite, rather than accept the fact that sometimes you speculate to accumulate and sometimes you accept the fact that you run the risk of investing in fighters, you don't make it every single time, you seem to be quite acerbic and facetious and vitriolic about people that choose not to take up your particular conditionality. I understand the fact if you want to make him a fight again, if it's a no, rematch clause against Bivol, I understand that. But if you want to stick him on a free fight deal after that, oh, why should he need to? No, he doesn't have to. He has the option to. He but chose, after it, that, what you've done is becoming quite bitter no, and, no, no. and facetious about it. I, I do, when I do 
I mean, every day, but mostly around fights. I do 50 or 60 interviews a day with outlets. I get asked various questions. Sometimes my responses aren't perfect. Sometimes I speak from the heart, which I will always do. And I'll speak honestly, in That's my, in my opinion. Thing. Right, whether you think I'm factually incorrect, like I do, like I do you on something. But I think you're a snake oil salesman. No, no, no. Well, I, th- Which I, I, think, do I think that's a bit harsh. There's a lot I can say well, you about would, you personally, you? but you know. But you have you've, you've said things about not, me personally. Not really. you, said, you said I'm the king of hypocrisy. With I mean, no basis. I for mean, that. you are the king of hypocrisy, but you how? talk like you're some kind of business expert. We know how that went for you. No, 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 no. no. In, in order to lose a lot of money, you have to make it in the first place. And if you're telling me if Tom, I'm a bit, to make a hundred million quid, it's a marathon, not to make a hundred million quid, to make a hundred million quid out one business in five years. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You went bankrupt. No, I didn't. What, 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 Crystal Palace Football Club. Don't be stupid. Crystal Palace Football Club. Don't be stupid, Eddie. I didn't go bankrupt at all. Crystal Palace Football Club. And don't say silly things that can get you into trouble because I didn't go bankrupt. In the slightest. In that case, I apologise. What I did was, like everybody else, that has challenges in life. Yeah. No, no, no. What I did was, as the biggest creditor, because of the biggest banking crisis in the world, I took a view that I could no longer fund it anymore, put it into administration and wrote off 50 million quid on the basis okay. of the fact that okay. I made 100 then, million then quid. So get your facts I right, I apologise. You right. took the club so into should. administration. No, I didn't take it into administration. A, sec- a secured creditor put it in there okay. and I had to take okay. my medicine, which I've never complained about. No, and I've, I've never bitched and whined about it. But, I've never gone you... about the fighters that run off of me and I invested in them and started crying about it. Well, you've I cried about anything. things. No, but, no, no. no but, but also... Never cried about but, anything. But you sit there and you don't acknowledge any side of business. What I'm saying to you, because do. you don't acknowledge the situation. Lawrence Acoli, another situation, okay? You have to make a call. Go back to the Crystal Palace days, right? And I'll say this to you. A player, right, gets an offer for, you know, he's out of contract or, or his, his yeah. contract's approaching. We've, we've been there it's with Leighton Orient. But understand what we've been mean. there with Leighton Orient. And all of a sudden, you have an option to pay a certain amount of money or to let the let the fighter go. You of have course. to make a commercial decision Agreed. based on the ability of that player yeah. or the fighter, the draw, the numbers, yeah, everything around it. But, there's no, but the, the, the point I was making, there's no implied criticism of that observation, right? Because a guy, you pay your money, he takes your choice, right? And so does the fighter. But the reaction from the fighters about being on the zone is not a particularly complimentary one. I, I disagree. Depends. And it would seem that they had no choice, and I suspect that's probably the reality of their world that they live in, which is when you pitched up sticks and decided that Sky was no longer for you and a better opportunity for matchroom and your billion-dollar pursuit, which, by the way, chapeau, well done for you. If you can get £60 million for matchroom boxing and make £12 million pound a year, fantastic. Nice, nice business. Not the group, I, know, I know, it's just boxing. I know I looked at the numbers the other day. Well done, you. 20% net on net, very good. But the point is this, is that they look at it and they don't fancy it. And they don't fancy the, the dynamic of what you've created for them. And to some extent, I understand the reasons why. Yeah, but you're talking about a couple of mm-hmm. isolated incidents who get people in their ear. The others that might say, it's been unbelievable for me. I've boxed in America. I've boxed globally. I've boxed on the Canelo Such Alvarez. Whom? Such as whom would say that? Well, I think Yafai. I mean, Boatsy's one of them. Mm-hmm. Katie Taylor. Well, Boatsy doesn't example. say it, does he? Boatsy's gone. So no, but Boatsy's not a good Yeah, no, I said, you, you asked me who... Boxed internationally on those cards. No, I asked you who would say something po- positive oh, I about think, it. I think anybody that's taken that opportunity. Well, and, uh, oh, I'll be interested yeah, to see how positive Katie you are, Taylor, idea about AJ fighting fight Jermaine America. Franklin. I mean, the, that's coming up next, but... April the 1st. AJ against Jermaine Franklin. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Fury, you seek, in the final part. We're going to talk. Uh, have you two piped down, actually? <laughs> yeah, it's all, all the personal stuff has stopped now in the last break, thankfully. Uh, Eddie, Anthony Joshua against Jermaine Franklin. Is this make or break for AJ? Absolutely. I mean, and obviously, I'm a promoter. I'm hyping the fight. But at the same time, I am nervous about the fight. He's coming off two defeats, albeit to Alexander Usyk. We saw emotionally the position that he, he was in after the last fight because he wanted to win so badly. He's got a new trainer. He's taken himself to Dallas with a very, very small team to work his absolute socks off. You have to understand, like, Sometimes the reason I speak so passionately about people, and, and the same with Conor Ben, is because I like them and I believe in them. They're people that are close to me, AJ particularly. Like I take it very personally when AJ gets criticised because when I look at the resume and I look at his ability to make fights and his willingness to make fights, it really gets on my wick where he gets sort of overrun sometimes by fighters that want to speak on social media, which he never does. Yeah. When you just have to look at his resume. And Usyk, you know, I get people saying... But his star has fallen. AJ course, Star has fallen dramatically. Ch- Jim, he's lost two fights on the bounce. He's no longer a world champion. Of course his star has fallen. But he's a man, in my opinion, that is an elite heavyweight. I believe he's top three heavyweight in the world, and sorry if that's such a crime, that wants to come back and try and regain his world heavyweight title. He's the purest individual. He's the hardest worker. He makes more sacrifices and commitments than any athlete I've seen. And he's my mate, Right. So I am so pumped for his return and I want him to go in there and I want him to show people how good he is. 
I want him to believe in himself. I want him to enjoy life. Yeah. I don't want him to be sad. I don't. I want him to appreciate what he's achieved and how good he is. No, the thing and is, and I want this, him to go in there and I want him to make a statement. If he beats Franklin, and we, we're going to cover it on Talk Sport, and you guys have got it in the zone. If he if he beats Franklin, and we'll talk about Fury Usyk in a moment, and Fury beats Usyk, are we at last going to see AJ Fury? I mean, you know, the whole. <laughs> we we had a bad run around the Conor Ben stuff and then the Fury negotiations. Tyson Fury is good or has been good in the past of convincing people of certain things. And during those negotiations, he convinced people that it was my or it was AJ's fault. For the record, I don't think AJ should have boxed uh, Usyk in December. Irrelevant. Fury in December. Sorry, Fury. Yeah, you're right. He told me, take I the agree fight. With you. I agree 60, with you. 60 40, we take the fight. After Tyson Fury drew with Deontay Wilder the first time out, he wasn't world champion. He should have won that night, but he wasn't world champion. We offered Tyson Fury 60-40 for the fight, champion against challenger. He turned it down. He said, I want 50-50 mm -hmm. as, as a challenger. We said, no. This time around, AJ's the challenger. He accepted 60-40. Ego got involved. He said, I want maybe not... All of a sudden, we were getting demands and pressures every day, deadlines on social media. It must be signed today. It must be signed today. It fell through. He would fight Tyson Fury. He would sign to fight Tyson Fury now for the same terms that we agreed back in November. 60, 40, et cetera, et cetera. I believe that's true. I know. True. So I when you true. say, will it happen? Like, I, I just... I don't Isn't know. That, I mean, do, do you think Fury would want to fight AJ? Yeah, I don't think. I think Fury has no fear of fighting anyone. Anyway. I think Fury realizes how good Usyk is, and I think Fury said, "Let's let's punt it out there at 70-30. He'll never take the fight. You must wish Fury was your fighter. He's a fantastic fighter, great name. I sat down with him in in Monte Carlo, talked to him about signing him. He was about twenty seven stone. He was sweating. And I thought to myself, mate, there is no way you will ever get back in the ring. What he has done has been unbelievable. But what I cannot have is when people stop me in the street and say, I wish AJ would be more like Fury. He gave all his money away to charity. Which he doesn't You do. know, et cetera, et cetera. But he is a great entertainer. He's, he's I mean, pick, look, he's he pick, makes, sometimes he? he makes me look average in terms of spinning things. And and for to, for a fighter to do spinning that. Spinning things? Yeah. You? Yeah. Stop it, yeah. Snake oil yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, I think people are seeing through that now. You know, and I think if he does get 70-30, I think it's an unbelievable deal for Tyson Fury. I are, are we right in believing that Fury Usyk will definitely happen? I don't know. It's just the numbers that Tyson Fury wants for that fight, they are so far away from doing it at Wembley. But sometimes with Tyson, he does the unpredictable. And I think... But it's he's, moved on now, isn't it? He's, kind he's, of, he's gone from wanting 105p out of every 100, right? Mm. He's now moved into a territory where he's got his split. That, that fight's done, I think. It's yeah, done. I think judging by some tweets from Frank and stuff like that, it it's sounds done. like it's there. I'm quite surprised. It's only six weeks away. Yeah. Like, mm. and, and Fury, but I thought there were times when Fury wouldn't fight Wilder and he did it. So mm. I kind of think he snookered himself into a position where Usyk, and fair play to Usyk, by the way, has turned around and gone, yeah, but I right. think he's actually, yeah, yeah. Because exactly. Frank, you know, Frank Warren, I think he was actually on Talksball. Yeah. Said easy fight to make, fifty fifty, yeah. and that was that was the perception that's of all right. parties. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 right. and, and yeah. Tyson did what Tyson did. And I think Eddie was absolutely right at the time. I thought he was right. I think there was no place. Ironically, one of um, Anthony's best friends is Michelle's a very close friend of Michelle's, my partner. So I, I'm always getting castigated by him about my views on Anthony Joshua. I do think lots of Anthony. I do think he's a flat track bully, and I do think he's gotten found out. And I don't regard him in the same way that Eddie does. And I also don't regard him in the way that Eddie does because he's not a cash cow for me but I do respect his achievements but I do think it was absolutely right people talking about this fight now with um, German Franklin I think it's the right fight for him to take because it rebuilds but then afterwards if he can't fight Fury and he can't fight um, Usyk because they're tied up right? I'd like to see him in with Dubois mm -hmm. or I'd like to see him in with Joe Joyce because mm -hmm. they're ranked higher than him he can take those fights wouldn't you take those fights? Yeah I, I don't think I mean the Dubois fight, I think Joyce is the guy that, yeah, you know, I, I don't think, I think Dubois is miles away in terms of, you know, actually the heavyweight division of the elite guys. But I think Joyce is right in there. I think he's a very tough man to beat. Those guys have sparred thousands of rounds. I've seen it. It's, mm. it's brilliant to watch. Um, honestly. Because that would be a great fight. If you asked AJ about fighting Joe Joyce, no problem at all. He would do it. I, if, no if he comes through against Franklin, would you put him in against Wilder? Absolutely. And, you know, I think he has three options. But can you make that fight with Franklin? What, what are the three options? 
Frank with AJ. Can you, can you make that fight for AJ against Joyce? Yes. That's a fight you can make. Yes, but it? I believe. And that's a fight Frank would make as well, wouldn't he? Mm, I believe he's waiting also for the. Don't forget, Joe Joyce is pretty Next much there line, yeah. to fight well, for the, the world title. What are the three options then, Eddie, for AJ? The if three it, options after Franklin. Franklin, and he has to come through Franklin, are Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, and Dillian White. And people say, oh, you throw Dillian White in there because that's the one that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the easiest fight to make. And I don't think there's any disgrace going off the back of the Usyk fights. Jermaine Franklin, Dillian White, Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder. That's a hell of a 2023. I would have preferred you'd gone in against Dillian White because I think he's a slightly diminished force and it would make more credibility. But I do understand because I don't think Franklin... Franklin gets a pass because it looks like he had a decent fight against Dillian but White. he did. He did. I understand <laughs> he did. But on paper, he's not even inside the top 30. He's just inside the top well, 30 on, heavyweights on in the world. I mean, you want to choose Boxer. Okay, right. yeah. yeah, but listen, well, Simon, he's a good fighter. He I had know, a very him. close fight with Dillian White. I, you, I saw him. You know, on one hand, it's like people want to say, oh, Franklin beat Dillian White. And then... You match him with AJ. I know, I people it. say AJ I, Sober. I, I like, heard you arguing about like, Zilly Zang yeah, and but, the fight but, for but, Joe Joyce. Yeah. I heard all that. But that's that's the pressure. That's you again, like, feeling no, that no, everyone's no, getting no, up no, against that's you. The, but you're saying you don't... Basically, what you're saying is you don't really agree no, with I, me I, that AJ's I an would, elite heavyweight, I, I, right? No, I do think he's an, I, well, I, I do think he's a top... You wouldn't, you wouldn't win the heavyweight championship in the world twice if you weren't. Okay. But I think he's changed from a fighter. But you said he's a flat track bully. I still think he's actually had his Yeah, of course he's disrespected. Yeah, I just think he's Are you serious? Why is it disrespectful if it's an honest opinion? Because you're not looking at the facts of who he fought at what time and the run of fights that he's been on. No, no, no. I've looked at him hiding behind a jab against Ruiz. I've looked at him boxing. Hiding behind a jab. I went to Joseph Park the fight, which was a snooze fest. Okay, the referee killed that. I get that. But I look at it and say... But he's nah. had like 22 fights. He's unifying the division. Know, he's he, fighting. But that's a different argument though, isn't it? I know, but the run that but he's been on is unbelievable. Argument. Anyway, what, what, what I want to say off, is, is what I want to say. On one hand, he's not that good. On the other hand, Jermaine Franklin's an easy fight. He's just had a life and death with Dillian White. I mean, so which one is it? Do you rate him or you're not? Tune oh, into the zone on April 1st. You'll find out. <laughs> if, if he can't I, beat Jermaine Franklin, so we, yeah, if, if he beats him, him in style, yeah. Exactly. And I think hey, that's I what you have to do. If he does a on job this. on Jermaine Franklin, I really yeah, appreciate you've been in here. We've done an hour and a half live. Can we do some more? If you want to carry on, we can carry on, mate. Um... I want to finish with this, and I just want you to round this off for us. Definitively, once and for all, if we finish on Connor Ben, just to get this right, you are prepared to promote Connor Ben fighting outside of the UK while he continues to prove his to, in an attempt to prove his innocence. Yes. While he's still trying yes. to prove his innocence, you'll promote him to fight outside the UK. I will look at fights for Conor Ben and I will make a decision on where that fight will take place. I will also actively speak to Conor and the British Boxing Board of Control about going through the process to ensure that he gets A, a fair hearing, and two, he tries to be able to box in this country. I do not want Conor Ben to fight around the world. I think this kid, who has got a good heart, and you know, yeah, re re that. regardless of people's but we're opinion, we're looking at June, are we? We're looking at he'll Pacquiao, be back. In, yeah, Pacquiao be, and no, June. I don't think it will be back. Look, I want to, you know, I want to make the, I want to make the Chris Eubank Junior fight. These guys have been going at it to each other the last couple of weeks. For me, as a promoter, I know, I know the build-up will be sensational. Smith, though, no, he's not, he's not signed to fight Smith. No, no, and the money's two or three times what he gets to fight Liam Smith. So Chris Eubank Jr. is not signed up to fight Liam no. Smith. And what you're saying no. now, if we're going to finish on this, you want Ben to fight Eubank Jr. Correct. The fight we were going to see, but we didn't see because of two failed drug tests, you're going to fix it outside the UK. Potentially, if we can't get it in the UK, which looks unlikely for June, but I want to start that process. And it, it's both of them sitting down with a blank sheet of paper and a clear head to try and find out what needs to be done to make Conor Ben fight in this country again. But I'm ready at the same time after the WBC hearing and after him w being allowed to fight in any jurisdiction to look at opportunities and potential fights. Will Eubank Jr. not want certain proof that Connor's clean? Of course. He'll be the most tested fighter. I mean, don't forget, he's still in all these programs. And by the way, I say again, and, and people choose to ignore it, Connor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. asked us to add an additional layer of testing to that fight above and beyond UCAD which ultimately we paid for, irrelevant. But they said, we want full VADA testing. He must be full VADA tested, non-stop. He's still part of that program. He can be tested any time. He's, he's still openly willing to Okay, so we're going to see this I'm outside sure the is. UK in June. That's what you want Possibly. to try and do. You will ben, see Conor Ben. Junior. That, that's the fight I would like. But Kel Brook, Manny Pacquiao, they're calling him out. 24-7. Okay. So we have to look at the options. So what are you do, doing tonight? Are you off to the cinema I'm going to take Simon you, out. Yeah, we're going to have a nice it? romantic meal. We can yeah. carry on. I think we could actually genuinely debate 
for a few more hours. Do you know what I mean? But I no, listen, I appreciate you giving me my time. I hope you enjoyed it. What do you want to say to Eddie? Nice to see him. Nice. Listen, whatever I may or may not think about some of the things he says and doesn't say, I do also respect the acumen he brings to the table. I don't think he's right in this situation. I think there is an Im- immorality about promoting Connor until he clears it up. I don't think he did his job at the outset. I do think he used undue influence. But I do also... I do also respect that. I thought, I thought it was a wonderful thing he did the other day when he sat in front of the cameras and goes, who puts these fights on? Moi. I thought, there you go, P.T. Barnum. That's a showman. That's what he needs. But he also needs blue chip guys to act in a blue chip way, and he doesn't sometimes. You respect this man? I do, actually. I think he's very bright, and I think he's very knowledgeable. I think I just want to make sure that sometimes in certain situations... I share your knowledge. No. <laughs> or your you, you, you'll never have my knowledge in boxing. <laughs> oh, it's true, because you've forgotten one I'll never know. No, no. But I could catch up. No, you, never know. you won't. You won't. But probably right. And, and, and probably actually, right. in terms of knowledge... I just do it differently. In, in terms of knowledge, you've got much more... You're much smarter than me. But in boxing... Well, I, I, you, I didn't you, think that was a debate anyway. No, no. But, uh, yeah, I'm telling you nicely. I mean, look, you're, you're a disc jockey. And I'm, I'm a, a failed businessman, <laughs> according to you. Failed I'm harsh. A, I'm it a didn't, go, didn't go well, but... Peace at last. Listen, it probably happened to me one day. I doubt it. Eddie, sincerely... Thank you for that. Thank you very much, man. That's Ben Shalom. Oh, no, it's not Spencer Shalom. Spencer, 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 Spencer,